Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two as two old guys review the films and the TV shows, the classic TV shows, on the Vintage Film Channel. Art, tell us our selection for the day. Oh, I'm going to be so clever here. We're two old guys, but today we're including a third van. <laughs> Oh, you are so slick. I, 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 I'm, I'm actually quite proud of that. Uh, <laughs> what a cheap trip. This is actually, uh, they've all been sort of fun. This has really been a fun, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry. This is a, as fun as uh, the last uh, two or three that we've reviewed. I really enjoyed this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, this is a, the third man, of course, comes from the... Um, uh, the movie, the book and the movie, which was, uh, I don't want, don't know when the movie was done, but in the late, early, late 40s, 40s. early 50s. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it starred or Orson Welles, became famous. And of course, the music from the movie, that zither, which I can't even. So you pretend. stole my thunder because I actually looked up and there was this whole thing about a zither and uh, that it was a yeah. favorite of somebody and who brought it in and uh it, even in the uh the episode castle of spain there was a restaurant scene there was a guy playing a zither oh really it was used for the theme song <laughs> and it's just kind of like a a, a mandolin in a box that sits yeah. on your lap kind of thing I, I, a zither is really obscure to me but it I, I, it's famous because of this song yeah and the, the theme i I think was the reason they made the TV show because after the movie, the themes lived on forever. It was very popular. Right. Anyway, uh, Vintage Film Channel. We we uh, just to reiterate, Vintage Film Channel has hundreds of old movies and old TV shows, classic TV shows, rescued from uh, obliteration. Uh, by Grace, and she's digitized them all. They're all in great shape, and they all, you know, they're some of them old, and they don't quite hold up. This one does. Well, this, I have to tell you, I have to tell you something well. that that uh, this third man. Uh, I don't remember watching it too vigorously um, uh, because I was like in my uh, mid to late teens, I think, when it hit the airwaves, and uh, I don't remember watching maybe more than one or two occasionally. But it's almost it's like James Bond meets Mission Impossible, so yes. it's it sort of preceded all that stuff. And this third man, especially you and I, have uh, had a whole bunch of conversations with uh, John Mariani, who's writing a a, a novel talking about Harry Lyme. Uh, it's right. a totally different Harry Lyme than was in the uh, uh, in the movie. The movie. The, the, yeah. He was a profiteer, and he was more of a good guy, uh, although. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's not a, the best of good guys, but a really, really fast movie. I enjoyed it. Well, it, 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 you know, of course, I didn't remember this series. I don't. If I saw it as a kid, I didn't remember it at all. Uh, looking back on it, but the character, of course, is a rogue. He's a lovable rogue. Right. He's handsome. He's um, he's a combination of the saint. If you remember, uh, Gabriel Carteris is uh, the saint. Right. And uh, uh, James Bond and a whole bunch of other characters here in the TV series played by Michael Rennie, right. as you can see the video running, um, who was fit the character perfectly. And he's kind of a good guy who skirts that uh, both sides of the law. Uh, oh, here's yeah. listen, stop right here. This is one of my favorite actors, Michael Rennie or or um, uh, Jonathan the, Harris the guy. The, Thank you. His his sidekick is played by Jonathan Harris, and the sidekick is is a uh, John is what's his name Webster uh, Bradford. I got to look it over here. Brad Bradford Webster Bradford is the name Bradford. of the character, but this is an early Jonathan Harris, and now you'll remember Jonathan Harris. Everybody will remember him from Lost in Space, right. and quite frankly, a hundred TV shows over the years. Uh, Jonathan Harris had a long storied career. And let it play. I don't. We don't have the sound for this, do we? Well, uh, the world will be able to hear it. You may not, but it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Well, here's the point I wanted to make about Jonathan Harris, which is something I love. 
of course, he was Mr. Smith in um, Lost in Space. Uh, thank you, Lost in Space. But he always was known for a semi-British accent, and he had a great voice, and he was he would, he was very he's stoic. He could never oh never made a face. Right. Anyway, Jonathan Harris was born in the Bronx. Did you know that? No. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So here he is with Michael Rennie, and you'll recognize Jonathan Harris. That face is, and that's that stoic look, that stare that he did. Um, You know, you could fill in the blanks for him. He was famous for it. He had a long, long career, and and appeared in television and movies. Really, a list as long as your arm. So I loved watching this just to see Jonathan Harris. Before Lost in Space, quite frankly. Yeah, but and, but, uh, but, but, uh, uh, but within this, uh, Michael was a, a Rennie, um, is really the right guy for this role, and he's oh, yeah. it's clever. And quite frankly, uh, I normally figure out the plot points before uh, the end of uh, the movie. This was actually well done. It kept me in suspense. I knew that it was going to work out well. I guess. I was assuming that. Yeah. But the point is yeah. that the way they did it was just so clever, and uh, it really holds up. It's it would be I think that if they were doing it today in a more modern way, it would it would hold up. Actually, if they had reshot it, this would still be a good uh, series. Sure. I, you know the interesting thing about this, if you look at the quality, uh, not only Grace's digital, uh, I call it a restoration, digital uh, saving of it. But look at the lighting and the filming. Yeah. It was a it was a quality production and they had a lot of great guest stars. This uh, this series ran for five seasons. Uh can't tell you what network, but the five seasons back then was a pretty good run. No, I, actually I think it was on both uh, NBC and CBS. It, it got moved around a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, I I I'm surprised it didn't last longer. Uh, I am too, but you know Michael Rennie was a big movie star, mm. and I think it was quite a coup to get Michael Rennie to play on a TV show. Right. My hunch is that he probably said, "I got to get back to the to the movies," you know, where the money was probably a lot better. Anyway, uh, if you fast forward on this, I just have one point I want to make. Fast forward to twelve oh nine, and. It's a scene where he meets the girl. You know, there's always because he's a this Bond-like character. He always meets a pretty girl, and this might be the scene you were talking about. The uh, with the z- uh, zither, the zither is zither. I can't do a zither. Sorry. Da, 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 but, da, 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 yeah. Yep. But not bad. Not bad. Anyway, he meets a pretty girl. And of course, the pretty girl uh, gets a, is part of some kind of intrigue. Do we remember who and, she was? Uh, and, I forgot who and she Harry was. And Harry Lime, Harry Lime kind of works both sides of the law, if you will, and uh, s- solves a mystery of some sort. Um, and there's some, usually a gun or two involved, but there's there was never a lot of um, Violence. physical action. Right. You know, today there would be shootouts and there'd be car chases and things like that yep uh, but this was really more of a uh, not a psychological drama but a intrigue a mystery drama right and it's very very well done all all the nine episodes that are happen to be on vintage film channel i think there's eight or nine of them maybe ten of them mm. um are a great example of the series that ran for five five years but they're all quality shows. They're all interesting stories. They're all well acted. They're beautifully directed. And the lighting is fabulous. And the production values are terrific. And they always have a pretty girl to kiss. And Harry Lime always saves the day. Right. What else do you need to know? So we suggest that you go to the link down below and go to Vintage Film Channel. Yep. You go to YouTube, Vintage Film Channel, uh, and we'll have a link for you down below to make it easy for you to get there. Uh, you should also, uh, we have a, uh, we've now established a playlist on the Celebrating Act 2 uh, channel that allows you to see all the Vintage Film Channel movies and 
TV shows that we've reviewed, and there'll right. be a link for that as well. And we ask you, if you would, please subscribe, because we want to turn our uh, project from a sort of like a hobby into a going concern. And uh, with your <laughs> help, we'll do that. But anyway, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode of Two Old Guys Go to Vintage Film Channel. And go there yourself and have a good time. And we'll see you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.